Good morning, church. Good morning and welcome to the house of the Lord. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. It's for his glory and honor we have gathered today and it is so good to see you all here this morning, uh, especially if you're our guest. We want you to know uh, we're so glad you're here and we want you to be warmly welcomed uh, in this hour of worship. Uh, those who are our guests in person and those online, we say hi to the folks watching on Facebook or YouTube or our website. We're glad you're with us. If you would, like and uh, comment on the video. That way we know who's with us and we can connect. Um, you can always private message us if you need to connect more. Um, but for everybody, we hope you'll fill out the registration of attendance and place this with uh, uh, when the offering plates come by a little bit later in the service. We'd appreciate that. Uh, Kay is here to share with us an exciting announcement. Good morning. Isn't the sanctuary just gorgeous? Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, this being the first Sunday of Advent, my announcement to you is today is the Advent um, adventure, we call it, from 5 to 7.30 in the Family Life Center. So um, this is for all ages, all ages. And our preschool Mother's Day Out students will kick this off uh, with the program first. And then we have a talent show, chili cook-off, woodworking, birthday party for Jesus, photo booth, reindeer food, decorating. I could go on and on. So there's many, many things that you can come and participate this afternoon. Also, our quilt ministry uh, will have a booth, and they will have great quilted items to purchase for Christmas gifts. So come uh, take uh, advantage of our family time together. There is a meal. Uh, our men's prayer breakfast will be cooking hot dogs and hamburgers. Now there is a cost of $5 a person or $15 a family, and that includes your meal. So where could you go to feed a whole family for $15? So come. Those proceeds go to our church and community outreach projects. And with the word outreach, Project. I'm going to ask uh, Jenny Speakerman Harvey and uh, Rucker Preston to come forward. This is Family Promise is our Christmas outreach for this Christmas season. I'll step aside and give you the podium. Thanks for having us today. My name is Rucker Preston, the director at Family Promise. We are a nonprofit here in Temple that serve children and families who are homeless working with churches just like you. Um, our program has, our organization has four different programs that address childhood homelessness, making sure families are safe and sustainable long-term. Most notably, we're known for our guest shelter where families can come stay on site. Volunteers such as yourselves spend a couple nights in the weekends providing meals, loving on our families, and us as staff provide case management, holding the families accountable. We work on six major things, addressing past traumatic experiences, making sure the children are in school and childcare, making sure that the children, that the parents have transportation so that they can have jobs and employment, that they're financially stable, so that then when we help them find safe, sustainable housing, uh, they're in those houses long term and not becoming homeless again. One of the other things that we do is we match the family's savings while they're in the program to make sure that they're um, financially stable with a $750 savings match. And then after they graduate from our program, I was sharing with a lot of the groups this morning, we had uh, a family who graduated on Friday morning, which is our favorite day of the year because they go into their own homes. Um, we help them move in and then we support them for the next year. We also have volunteers come on Sunday nights and Friday nights to provide meals for typically 20 to 25 people. And uh, on Sunday, we have volunteers simply drop off a meal. And then on Fridays, volunteers stay for a couple hours to play with the kids and hang out with the families, provide encouragement for them. Uh, and also, we have put together a, uh, a set of targeted giving amounts that Kay has put together nicely for us. And it's out in the lobby. But it um, gives you some ideas of what we can do with donations, like $50 we can uh, furnish a bed with sheets, mattress protectors, comforters, pillows, and those things the families take home from them when they leave the program, towels too. Um, and then all the way up through about $1,200, which would sponsor 
a person going through the entire program, including counseling <clears throat> and other programming they get while they, they are there. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Thank, Thank you all, friends. Thank yes. And our week to serve meals on Friday and Sunday is coming up soon, so be on the lookout for that in the website and on the, in the Weekly Word and all kinds of places. We'll have that advertised in a place for you to sign up. We also wanted to make sure you were aware that even though Advent Adventure is coming, we are going to have a broken workout right before, so you can get warmed up. You get warmed up properly for it, right? And that's part of our health and outreach ministries. That'll be at 4 o'clock across the street. Um, high school will not meet tonight as just high school will be a part of the Advent Adventure because it's a lot of fun. And uh, <clears throat> I could say we'll have snowballs and face painting from the youth ministry, so that'll be fun. I think Do you that's where we're at. about the Christmas party coming up? Oh, yeah. Youth Christmas party coming up December 13th at 6 p.m. White elephant gift. There'll be games. There'll be a hot chocolate bar from Miss Vicky Street and probably some chips and queso and stuff like that. So we would love to have you. We've got the, we're participating in the city Christmas parade tomorrow. So yes. read about that. If you want to be involved, we'd, uh, we'd love for you to be, to participate or come watch the parade. Uh, it goes right by, right by the church. And uh, some special things coming up this week. This is our last Wednesday evening programming for adults uh, and children on Wednesday nights until January 10th. And so uh, come on Wednesday evening, we'll have uh, dinner, burritos this week, and we'll finish up our study of Revelation. So even if you haven't been journeying with us, this is the best part. It's the, the ending that's so great. So you'll want to come to that on Wednesday. Um, be sure you're reading this. It comes out by email on Fridays, but be sure you're reading through so many activities and opportunities to get connected and to learn and grow together and to serve. And we don't want to neglect next Sunday will be Big Music Sunday and Pastor Tom will be back. And so we really encourage y'all to be here for that. Yep. And I think so that's what we got. Sunday morning and the Sunday afternoon concert. So much going on. Yeah. We just need you to read everything. Yep. <laughs> All yep. right. Excellent. Now it's time for the Advent reading. Oh, no, I apologize. Apologize. We had a debate about this. Right? I was wrong for a service. You were wrong yes, for a service. I'm it all evens out. Friends, please stand as you are able and greet one another in the strong name of Jesus Christ. As you make your way back to your seat, let me encourage you to turn your attention. This is indeed the first Sunday of Advent, and we'll be lighting our Advent wreath, the first candle on our Advent wreath. So if you would, please be seated. This candle as a symbol of Christ our hope. May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Good morning, church. If you will, stand as you are able and join me in our call to worship that may be found in your bulletin. And then following that, our opening hymn, number 163. <clears throat> Give ear, O shepherd of Israel. You who, be like you who are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Friends, you may be seated. We now come to an especially uh, joyful time in the life of our church. We are doing a confirmation today. So Miss Caitlin, will you come on up? Your family may come up with you. All right. Miss Caitlin, no, you can stand, you can stand. <laughs> All right, and Miss Michelle Carr has been leading us or helping lead us through confirmation. And the way we do this is first off, we tell you that you should remember your baptism and be thankful because you were baptized as an infant, correct? All right, so you come to us baptized, which is excellent. Now, we're going to do the examination of the ordinance. And these are the simple questions we talked about. All right, so I'm going to guide you through them. Here we go. Do you renounce the devil, the spiritual forces of wicked, wickedness, and reject the evil powers of this world? If so, say, I do. Excellent. Do you repent of your sin and confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior of your life? Do you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? Excellent. Do you accept the responsibility to resist evil, injustice, and oppression by the grace and power of God? Excellent. Now I'm switching it up on you a little bit this time, all right? Okay. Will you put your whole trust in God and obediently keep his will and commandments all the days of your life by the power of his Holy Spirit? If so, say, I will. Excellent. All right. Church, it is now time for your examination. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. Will you, as witnesses to Caitlin's vow, encourage her in faith and do all in your power to support her in her life in Christ? If so, say, we will. We will. Let us join our candidate... 
in our uh, proclamation of faith that has been an ancient part of every confirmation for a very long time. It's the Apostles' Creed. You can find the Apostles' Creed in your bulletin and follow along. All right, Miss Caitlin, you can turn around. All right, here we go. Who is? Bobby's going to come and lead us. Excellent. Please stand and join me in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the, On the third, third day, day he, he rose again, again. and he ascended into heaven, heaven and is seated at the right hand of the God. He, he will come, come again to judge the living and the, and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life Amen. everlasting. Amen. All right, friends. friends you may be seated will the family come forward caitlin now you may kneel right there you go excellent all right miss caitlin you have now pronounced your faith publicly before the entire church and claimed jesus christ as your lord and savior and now your family miss michelle and leslie and i are going to lay our hands on you and pray for you all right so let us touch uh, uh miss caitlin Holy God, we thank you so much for this young person and for all that she is and will be. We thank you for her family who has guided her faithfully to this point. Lord, we ask that you will enable our church to continue to guide her, to bless her, and to help her to, lead, to live in the way that leads to life. Holy Spirit, we ask for your presence on her all the days of her life so that she may be a faithful member of your church. We pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. All right. Miss Caitlin, we have one more thing for you. You can go ahead and stand up. Every confirmant, we want to make sure that they have the word of God with them. And so we are giving you this Bible. It's got your name in it and everything. And we also have a lot of fun, so we're giving you a Chick-fil-A gift card, too. So we want to make sure you get fed both spiritually and physically, right? All right. So this is what we have for you. And then I think, Miss Michelle, do you, do you have your gift? Okay. Why don't you grab that real quick? Miss Michelle has something for you as well. And then we, Leslie, will you join her to the church? We got to not forget that part. Yeah, Miss Michelle has a gift for you. All right. <laughs> well, let me ask you then the vows of membership. I ask not by myself, but on behalf of the whole church. Will, be, will you be loyal to this congregation of the Global Methodist Church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Wonderful. Would you welcome our newest member? Turn around. Excellent. Excellent. And then after service, if you'll stay down here and so everyone can greet you that would like to. Well, we certainly started this one with a joy. Amen. Um, it's also a joy to see the church <laughs> decorated for Christmas. And if you get a chance, you need to thank, thank Sammy Marshall for it. He's worked very hard to make it look so pretty. We have congratulations to Frank and Tiffany Espinal on the arrival of their grandson, Raymond Victor Pierre Luises, born November 29th. Proud parents are Emily 
and Alex Pierre Luises. We need to pray for comfort and healing for those in the hospital. Margaret Averett, we have a special joy with Margaret. She's been in the hospital for months after being delivered prematurely with a number of medical problems, and she's going home tomorrow. John Burt, Sharon Douglas, Shannon Robbins. And uh, we had Alan Price as being in the hospital, but he's gone home, but is continuing to have difficulty maintaining his sugar and may or, not have to, may, or may not have to go back. Um, Pat Fader uh, is scheduled for surgery, but it's been postponed. We need to pray for comfort and healing and strength for those recovering from surgery or other concerns. Mark Erskine, Sherry Graham, Kathy Kinsey, and Janet Donegan. Please keep Sandy Oliver and her family in your thoughts and prayers. Sandy's father, Jack, passed away last week. Please pray for comfort for those on hospital care and for their families, Nancy Spencer. Our special member of the week is Mark Erskine. Erskine. Um, you'll find his address in the bulletin. Please drop him a line and let him know he's a special member of our church family. Let's pray. Dearly and best beloved Heavenly Father, we greet today's opportunity to share the sacrament of Holy Communion with joy. Our regret and remorse for our many sins is boundless. We ask for your mercy and grace and for your intervention in favor of those we have lifted up. When you call on us, let us remember Mary's courageous answer. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. May our humble words gain credence with your timeless prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would the ushers please come forward for the offertory? Let's pray. Gracious and forgiving Lord, you provide, you provide for us spiritually, financially, physically, and in many other ways. Therefore, we submit our tithes and offerings so that your church can continue providing for us and others worldwide. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. 
down. All right, all right. We've got a good looking crew today. I love it. I love it. All right. Whoops. Things getting all messed up. All right. So, does anybody know why today is a special day? All right, what do you think? Don't know? All right, what do you think? Bam! First day of Advent. Good call, my friend. That is correct. Yes, ma'am. And December is Jesus' birthday. That's right. Jesus' birthday is in December. Communion. Communion. That is another good reason today is special. You guys are hitting it out of the park. I do like your shoes. Those are awesome. Excellent. Excellent. All right, friends. Now, Advent, that's kind of a strange word, right? But what word is a bigger word that uses Advent? Do you think you can guess? Well done, adventure. You can't spell adventure without Advent, right? That's pretty cool, isn't it? So here's the thing, is when Mary and Joseph were told that they were going to have the baby Jesus, there were some other people who figured this out too. Do you guys know who the three people, there were three specific people that figured this out? The wise men. That's right, the three wise men. You guys are doing awesome today. The, then they brought presents, yeah. Now here's the thing, how did the wise men know where to go? Wait. The star. The star, that's right. They saw the star and they followed the star. It was kind of like Google Maps way back, right? It's kind of, the, yeah, a little bit, right? So the star led them all the way to Bethlehem where they could find baby the, Jesus. yeah, they could find baby Jesus. Now, they had to start their adventure long before they got to, before Jesus was born, because it took them a long time to get there. So here's one of the things we got to remember is that sometimes, even in the darkness, right? Hey, boys, shh. All right, so here's the thing. Even in the darkness, even in the darkest of darks, even when adventure gets hard and it gets hairy, right, and it's like you're not sure how it's going to turn out, we can look up and remember all the stars and remember the one star that was the most important. Now, the North Star is very important for navigating, yes. But we can remember the star that led the wise men to Jesus and remember that no matter how dark, yeah, that no matter how dark it gets, that there will always be light. And why will there always be light? Because Jesus is what? Holy. He is holy. He's the light of the world. And he's watching over all of us. That's right. He is watching over all of us. That is perfect. All right. Good job, friends. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do our creed, then we're going to do our prayer, and then we're going to get three Tootsie Rolls. What do we do with the first two Tootsie Rolls? What do we say when we give them away? God loves, God loves you. Then we do what with the other Tootsie Roll? Now, why do you eat it? Bam, because God loves you too. Good job, friends. That's right. All right, so here we go. Shake your arms out. Get them warmed up. Here we're going to do the creed. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, ready? Do what I do. Say what I say. I believe in God above. I believe, in God above. I believe in Jesus' love. I believe the Spirit, too, will teach me what to do. Amen. All right, friends, let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes, put our hands together, and then repeat after me. Here we go. Dear God, thank you for loving me and always being with me. Now, God, please help me to share your love with others. Amen. All right, friends. Miss Tiffany has your Tootsie Rolls.
Today's scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, paragraphs 18 through 25. In all reverence for the Word of God, please rise as you are able. The birth of Jesus, the Messiah. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with the chi- with a child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thank you, Bobby. Our gospel reading for this first Sunday of Advent is the less familiar story of Jesus' birth. We're a little more familiar with Luke's version. Uh, That's the one that Linus reads in the uh, Charlie Brown Christmas story. And we'll look look at that one more closely uh, next week and on Christmas Eve. But today we're going to look at Matthew's accounting. If you look in the Gospel of Matthew, it starts with Jesus' family tree. It's the genealogy of Jesus. Uh, A fascinating look at a grace-filled line from Father Abraham to King David to our Mary and Joseph. And then our text picks up with Mary and Joseph. They were engaged to be married. Uh, The parents, their parents were planning the music. They were getting the fatted calf ready for the feast. You know, plans were underway when Mary was found to be pregnant. She was with child. Joseph finds himself in a dilemma. A significant dilemma. He's a godly man, uh, a faithful Jew. He understands the law of God uh, and faithful to the Jewish law, which was quite clear on the consequences of adultery. And being not pregnant from your fiance was considered just the same as if you were already uh, married. Engagement was a serious contract. So Joseph faces a dilemma. To be faithful to the law of God, Joseph should take her to the authorities and the punishment could be significant, it could be stoning. To be kind, to be merciful, he had decided to dismiss her quietly. Now this would mean the contract was voided, the case dismissed. She and the child could move on and try to make it on their own without the social safety net and the financial support of a husband and father. And in those days, I kind of wonder if Mary's own father would have cared for this rebellious daughter or if she would have had to make it on her own. But God intervenes to persuade Joseph of the truth of the origins of this child. And when God means to be persuasive, God can be persuasive, right? He sends an angel of the Lord to Joseph. Um, Now this, usually people think of kind of fluffy cherub-like angels, but um, Joseph is, as most of them are, terrified of this soldier of the Lord. Uh, Did anybody see the Bible miniseries several years ago? They had, I thought, really great depictions of angels. They were like ninjas of God. These were like strong men, you know, messengers of God. Not the lovely ladies with fluffy wings. Not that picture. Think the messenger of God. These are God's warriors. They're known for exacting vengeance on Sodom and um, delivering the plagues on Egypt. So Joseph was right to be afraid. Uh, But the angel assures him of the right direction he should take in this dilemma. Assures him uh, of what he should do. The right decision he should go. And the writer of Matthew is the first to link Jesus' birth to a prophecy that Isaiah made to King Ahaz. Now, I 
probably learned more this week about King Ahaz than uh, is fitting for a sermon, but you scholars out there should add this one to scriptures to dive into because Ahaz is a fascinating character. But the short version of King Ahaz uh, was that he was the king of the smaller southern kingdom of Judah when the, this was the divided kingdom. This is more than 700 years before Christ is born. So we're going way back in Israelite history. Uh, king Ahaz was the king of this smaller southern kingdom of Judah. That's where Jerusalem was. And the northern kingdom of Israel was more powerful, and they're strong, and they're collaborating with the powers to the north and the east, and so they're actually collaborating with others to come and take over Ahaz's land and people. So Ahaz is a little worried. He's actually really worried, and with good reason. So the prophet Isaiah comes to him and begs him to be faithful to Yahweh, to be faithful to the God, uh, to, to God, to be faithful. But Ahaz doesn't have much faith in God, and he doesn't listen to Isaiah. He's making plans of, you know, kind of grasping at straws, reaching out to other foreign nations and other foreign gods to help them out of this situation. He doesn't have faith in God. So Isaiah offers him a sign. He says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. That's Isaiah 7, 14. Unfortunately, Ahaz doesn't listen. He doesn't listen to God. He doesn't listen to God's prophet. And his people are later taken into slavery and exile. But in the face of a great dilemma that this king of God's people has, God says to this king through the prophet, trust me, I am with you. This will be a sign that I am with you. Trust me in me and me alone. That baby will be a sign that I am with you. Now Matthew, as I said, is the first one to link Jesus to that prophecy some 700 years earlier and to say this baby is a sign to us. In the dilemma that we are facing, that this prophecy about a young girl giving birth to a baby named Emmanuel is the hope for us. Looking back at the birth of Christ, Matthew sees that this baby also, that in this one, God is telling us, telling all people to trust him and that he is present with us, to trust his presence in Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God with us. God is still speaking to those of us who face that dilemma of whether we trust in God or trust in ourselves, whether we choose the way that leads to life or the way that leads to death. We face those dilemmas in our lives still today of where to place our allegiance, who to listen to. We face those same dilemmas. And here, God is asking us, are you going to put your faith in yourself or are you going to put your faith in God? Joseph was facing a really tough decision to trust what God had revealed to him through the law and his community, his faith, or to trust what God revealed to him in the angel of the Lord. Joseph had a tough decision, but in an immense act of faith, in an immense act of surrender to the will of God, Joseph takes Mary as his wife and Jesus to be his son. Joseph is the model for what it means to be faithful, to choose to trust in God. The Son of God was adopted by a man. That's an amazing statement, isn't it? That the Son of God was adopted by Joseph. Usually, we think of God as accepting or rejecting us. We sort of petition ourselves before God and hope that he um, accepts us. But in this story, we see God coming to Joseph and saying, will you accept me? Will you receive me? Christmas is God humbling himself to us that we might receive him. Adopt this child as our own and allow him to save us from our sins. I want to share with you a story of a young man uh, that Charles Anderson shared with me some time ago about a young man whose wife died. And after it left him with a small son. After returning from the cemetery, they went to bed just as soon as it was dark because the 
father couldn't think of anything else to do. He couldn't, really couldn't bear to do anything else. So as he lay there in the dark, he was numb. In a little while, his little boy came in from his room and got into bed with his dad. He said, Dad, where is Mommy? The father tried to get the boy to sleep, but the child was disturbed and restless. He kept asking his heartbreaking questions. Finally, the boy reached out in the darkness and placed his hand on his father's face. And he said, Daddy, is your face toward me? <coughs> yes, it is. Assured by his father's words and by his own touch, the boy said, if your face is toward me, I think I can go to sleep. And in a little while, he was quiet. The father lay there in the darkness, and finally, he prayed something a little like this. Oh God, the way before me is dark, and I can't say I can see my way through right now, but if your face is toward me, somehow I know I'll make it through. You know, that's not really a Christmas story, but it is a story of Christmas, of God turning his face toward us, letting us know that I am with you always and everywhere. Trust in my presence. The, this Advent, this Christmas, this day, I pray that you would be encouraged and emboldened by the face of God turning toward you. God loves you and has Come in Jesus Christ and make himself known to you that you might trust in him fully with every choice in your life, every decision, every bit of yourself, that you might trust him for that. Jesus came to bring light in our darkness. Whatever darkness we face, whether it's a darkness from our past or a darkness of an uncertain future, a darkness of a hurt, a habit, or a hang-up that just is making a mess of things. Whatever darkness we face, Christ came to bring light, to guide you. So trust in him. Don't be deceived. There is one who would tell you you are all alone and you better figure it out. But that is not the voice of God. God is here with us. He is in this with us. In Jesus Christ, he has come to remind us that we can trust him, and that he's always with us. One of the most important, I think the most tangible ways that we experience the presence of God is at the table, at the communion table, where we remember and rehearse the story of Christ offering himself for us. And we receive that offering and offer ourselves back to him. So as we gather at the table of the Lord, I'll invite Pastor Kit to come and assist. But we come knowing that we don't get to come to the table because we had a great week or because we got our life together or things are going pretty well. We come because Christ invited us, knowing that we don't merit a seat at this table. But Christ invites us, and so we come. Christ invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift your hearts up. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so in remembrance of these, your acts, of mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. On the night in which Christ gave himself up for us, he gathered with his disciples and he took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to them and he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. In the same way, when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. Lord God, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would those who are assisting come forward at this time? As they make their way uh, here, I want to share a little bit about how this will go. The ushers will uh, direct you to the, um, to the altar, and you're invited to kneel or stand as you're able. We, uh, the elements will be brought to you. Uh, if you need gluten-free elements, let us know. We have gluten-free wafers uh, here on the table. Just ask your server. Uh, you'll have the option of bread or the wheat wafers that are on the altar as well. But do know that those aren't gluten-free, so ask for the gluten-free if you need that. Um, but you are all invited to come and experience the tangible presence of Christ as we gather at his table.
let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Help us now in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to extend to you the invitation to be a member of the people called Methodist here in Temple, to be a member of our church. We'd love to welcome you, to give you the opportunity to make a vow of membership today. Uh, our lay leaders will stand with us, um, Buzz and Bobby uh, and Pastor Kit and I, as we sing uh, our hymn of response. You can just come down and we give you the opportunity to join the church. If you'd rather do that after the service, uh, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, and if you're watching online, you're welcome to join our church as well. We have a number of members uh, that connect with us online. So uh, just message us and we'll reach out to you shortly. Uh, but however you join, we want you to know we want you as a member of our church family. Won't you stand? Let us respond to God as we sing together. What a joy to be with you, to be the church inside this church today. Uh, thank you for being here. Hear now the words of the prophet Isaiah as your benediction. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. God bless you. Would you be seated as we receive the postlude? <clears throat> <clears throat> 